Hey everyone, we've got Logan, CigarFederation.com, Pipe Dummies episode, I believe it's 23, Dan Tobacco, Old Ironsides, I'm here with my two co-hosts, co-founders, sidekick, kick asses, we got of Stogie Review, the motherfucking bull shark, Ben Lee, and of Cigar Federation, we got the motherfucking pussy boost farm, Moonbeam! <laughs> I like how I get, oh, and on the other side, we got this guy. Yeah, uh-huh. You're welcome. What's up, guys? I appreciate that shit. How much? <clears throat> I didn't know you had glasses, bull shark. Yeah, well, I usually wear contacts, but it's I've had my contacts there for quite a while, so. Are you able to not take them out and sleep in them and all that cool shit? Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're so lucky, because I, I used know. to wear contacts, because I'm blind as a motherfucker, and... Mm -hmm. Dude, I slept in them one night and gave myself the worst eye infection ever and haven't worn them since, like, my senior year of high school. You need to revisit them because now they got uh, Cooper and uh, I think it's Bal Shalom. They both mm -hmm. have these special um, permeable contacts that you you're, you can sleep in for up to a couple of weeks. No shit. Yeah, they've been out for about two or three years now, and they are awesome. Super awesome. I have to be careful because sometimes I forget that they're in there. Dude, I never had that problem. Like, I could always tell that they were in there. It drove me freaking nuts. But granted, that was like yep. mid-90s when I was wearing them. But. Yeah. Well, I couldn't wear them then either. I have, I have an astigmatism in both eyes. So. I do too. Well, th with these new contacts, that's that's not even an issue. I'm telling you, revisit it. It's All awesome. right. All right. So All Bull right. Shark's got me spending more money in Obamacare. Thank you, Bull You're Shark. Welcome. No it. problem. Whatever I can do is help the economy. <laughs> yeah, I can do to help the economy. Yeah. Which, by the way, I know we're off topic here. We are going to talk about Dan Tobacco oh, yeah. and Moon, motherfucking Moonbeam, and Bull Shark have done their research. We're going to drop some fucking knowledge on you, motherfuckers. But before I do that, I just want to say I've been watching. I watched a new show today, and I was early in the morning, and I just wasn't feeling like starting work. It was like six thirty, and I was flipping through the the TV, and I was like, man, I just want something to watch. I'll start working around seven thirty, and Dude, I got Showtime on demand. Dude, they're mm -hmm. doing this thing where they're following around all the the candidates. It's like these two guys from uh, Bloomberg or whatever. Like uh, they've covered elections and they like are behind the scenes with all the political candidates. Dude, it is fucking awesome. Really? Oh, dude, it's like total like mass off. Like everyone thinks Bernie Sanders, and I don't mean to offend you, or actually I don't really give a fuck if I do offend you, but Bernie Sanders, they make him out to be this crazy socialist. Motherfucker's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He is. I mean, he's he's the uh, that crazy ass uncle that you run into. He's like the crazy grandpa. Yeah, that's exactly what he is. He's kind of cool though, because like, he actually takes like the subway to go to work and yeah, stuff. No, they highlighted like, all they, that, which is awesome. I know, that's really cool. I mean, he is he is kind of a whack job, but they all are. All the candidates are whack jobs. Yeah. Oh, but. dude, it, it's so hilarious. And, like, everyone thinks Ted Cruz is such an asshole. And, like, in it, he's not really that big of an asshole. He's actually an all right guy. Not that I'd vote for Ted Cruz. But, uh, anyways, needless to say. So we're smoking Dan Tobacco Old Ironsides. It's a little bit, I'll let uh, Moonbeam slash Bullshark Tell us about what you just dropped knowledge about right before the show. Uh, all I was saying was, if you've smoked pipe for a while, you might remember that CAO used to make, I think it was five or six um, tobaccos. It just came in a tin. And, and I never they was still able to. They make do they? Lena's oh. Dream and all that. They still do. I'm talking, yeah. I, I mean, they're talking about like dream. regular tobaccos. Oh, okay. Like not, not aromatic. Far. Not Boone's Farm stuff. But anyway, <clears throat> and I i mean, they were out for quite a while. And I, they kind of were never really gained a whole lot of notoriety, which is kind of odd because CEO actually started out as a pipe company. They actually imported Meerschaum pipes. That's how CEO started. Really? I didn't but, know Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, – so they had these pipe tobaccos out, man. I never really tried them. I never got around to try them because I never, I never really saw them anywhere. But one, as a history nut, that always really intrigued me was Old Ironsides, because it's named in in honor of the USS Ironsides, you know, the USS Constitution. I thought it was the Monter and the Merrimack or Mer Mer or something. 
It's the Civil War. Uh, no. Old Ironsides yeah. are originally the USS Constitution. Yeah. I, I don't think that's right. No, that's <laughs> well, I right. don't care. The yeah, first Ironside long. ship was in Civil War was the Monter and the Merrimack. And the oldest battleship in the U.S. Navy is a USS Constitution, which is what the Ironsides is named after. But it wasn't made out of iron. You want us to pause so you can go Google it and see for yourself? I don't know, man. I'm feeling pretty confident about my answer. Well, oh, but then you probably should go look at Google. I'm about to go Wikipedia this bitch and prove all you motherfuckers wrong. Okay, go ahead. We'll wait. Uh, tie in the uh, Jeopardy music. I mean, it is a wooden hulled ship, but it is called Old Ironsides because, well, it might as well have been made out of iron because they couldn't sink that damn thing. I'm about to Google. I'm Googling. Well, I can finish lighting up this. Well, it wasn't an iron-sided ship. You're going to find that. I'm telling you that. I know that because I'm it right. Was called, it was called Old Ironside. Well, it wasn't made out of iron. No, but that's what it was called. Well, I don't care what it was called. It wasn't made out of iron. The first ship made out of iron was the Monter and the Merrimack. Are you yeah, crawfishing now? But that's what this freaking tobacco was named after. Well, I've got the that's fucking funny. wrong name. <sighs> mm. Oh, Logan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm right. No, you're not. Yeah, man. Anyways, I don't want to. First meeting of ironclad warships. The USS Monitor and the CSS Merrimack, a.k.a. Virginia. Yes, but the USS Constitution is the ship named Old Ironsides. Nick well, it wasn't made out of iron. That was a shitty name. But that's what they called it because they couldn't freaking sink it. Okay, well, why don't they call it, oh. like, the USS Unsinkable? <laughs> it's anyways, I'm, being, I'm just trying to be a jerk right now. Continue. Please continue, guys. <laughs> I don't so know. Anyway, now you that you try to mar the name of the most famous naval ship in, in the United States history, I don't know you know what to do with you right now. I don't know, man. I would also say the probably the most famous battleship or warship right ever in USS history was probably the USS Missouri. Mm, no. Uh, yes. I don't think so. I don't know, man. It's pretty important. Not as important as the USS Constitution. All right. We're not going to argue it because we'll not get anywhere. So anyways, you were looking around, trying to buy it, you know, da 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 couldn't find it, and then what happened? Well, basically, it just when CEO got bought out by General, from what I understand, they basically just, the, the pipe tobacco kind of went away. And Dan's Tobacco is now re-releasing the old Ironsides. Um, I don't know when they redid company, it. it. Do what? Isn't that a German company? I believe it is. That's uh, what I thought. I could be wrong. Doesn't really say, but it just says, but it, it um, but a tobacco reviews.com it says this hearty blend celebrates the oldest battleship in the US Navy, the USS Constitution. The blend is a Latakia lover's dream. A high percentage of Cyprian Latakia is complemented by Kentucky, Oriental, and Virginia tobaccos cake aged for twelve weeks. This flake cut blend is full and cool smoking. Pre release as CEO CAO old iron sites. So it's basically the same tobacco. It's just now it's Dan Tobacco, not CAO. Well, but, it's funny because when you look at it, it's actually uh, when it's CAO, it was classified as a bulk, and now it's classified as an English. Although it's the pre, I mean, it says it's the same blend, but I doubt it's the same. I doubt, I'm probably too. I don't know that. because I don't know who made it for uh, CAO. I'm not real sure. Was it Scandinavian Tobacco? I don't know. No, if it was, then it's probably the same. I don't know. I don't I have no clue, but I doubt it. What well, I'm going to do just for science, I'll email or and or call or text my good buddy John Huber and see if uh, he can scrounge up a a tin of CAO old Ironsides from back in the day. Because yeah, if well, anybody could, he probably could. That'd be cool. Yeah, no, I'll have to ask him. But it's cool to see this is uh, still out there. Like I said, I never... I have to be honest. Any of the stuff that harkens back to 
you know, anything in history, or it's because they can say, oh, this is an original blend from, like, you know, Victorian era England or way back in the day. I'm kind of a sucker for that. That's an easy, you know, marketing point to hit me on. <laughs> so this time to the USS Constitution, even though it's just an honor of it, doesn't really mean anything, but that's still kind of cool to me. So right, kind of glad to try it. Because until you sent this to me, I hadn't, I actually hadn't seen this around either. And kind of honestly wasn't on my radar anymore. Well, the reason I got it, I strategically did it because people will ask, hey, if you can't get, you know, Penzance, what can you smoke that's somewhat readily available that is somewhat similar to it? And a lot of people name off a lot of different things, but one thing I see all the time is Dan Tobacco Old Ironsides. I hate that I missed last week <laughs> so much. Oh, dude, we didn't, we didn't we didn't go as crazy nut job over it as you, you would have. We told everyone that you gave it a seven and a half on a five point scale. Yeah, um, dude, Penzance is like one of my all time greatest tobaccos forever. So, ugh, comparing comparing it to this is like I don't know. Yeah, this does not taste like Penzance. This is harsh as F. Really? Mine's not. Mine's yeah. harsh as shit. Mine's not harsh Mine's at pretty, all. Mine's pretty smooth, and I actually can kind of get some similarities between it. Well, moonbeam. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's got that Latakia smokiness, but there's a little bit of creaminess in there, and you get that little bit of floral. I can kind of I can kind of see. Yeah, I can see where it going, uh, but. I don't know if I'd say this is a good Penzance alternative, but it depends this is on way how dirtier the Penzance. This is way dirtier. Like the Penzance had a like a pretty clean finish. Like this is not finishing clean. Like it's like got a, like a funk to it. It's just kind of like resting on the la, 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 on my tongue. I'm not getting that. No, I'm not mine, a fan of it. Mine's quite good. Well, so I, I do have a, a question that popped up for Bull Shark. Really? Somebody's actually yeah. watching this shit show? Oh, well, we got Shooter and Jeff M. They're both hanging out in there like usual. There are You know, all I gotta say is all your listeners there. Things start slow, but maybe people don't watch live, but you would shit yourself if you knew how many people downloaded this podcast every week. I'd probably be surprised. Take a guess. Fifty people. Ye of little faith. Bull shark. Three hundred. Well over a thousand. Nice. Yeah. But Love you got to realize this is also on the Cigar Federation podcast where cigar chat episodes get, you know, three to five thousand downloads. So we're getting some ancillary effect, some halo. It's not bad for pipes. Yeah, but not no, bad. We're, we're we're a pipe show on a cigar site for cigar people. It's very true. That's pretty good. No, I'm happy with it. So before I lose my segue into Jeff's question there. Jeff would like to ask Bull Shark how he keeps Penzance lit for more than 4.8 minutes at a time. I don't really have a problem keeping it lit, but I, I usually smoke it in um, large bowls, so maybe that's what it is, too. Plus, I don't know. I mean, kind of, I, I rub the flake out pretty well, but not to a pretty fine dust or anything like that. Giggity. It's a little bit, a little bit bigger chunk, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't have. I've already had a problem with it, but I'll have to pay attention. To, uh, See, I mean, we, we had a lot of that prep. question last week about that because mine was burning quite well towards the end. I had a light a couple times, but yeah, it burned pretty, pretty clean. But well, everybody else was mentioning issues about keeping it burning. Some let it dry, some didn't, some rubbed yeah. it out more than others. They still all had issues. So yeah, and let it question dry last week. Yeah, definitely let it dry out a little bit. You know, I usually, you know, I'll lay out some of the flakes. I'll tell you what, actually what I usually do is I got I get a little container and I actually will rub out a, several flakes and put it in this container and leave it in there. So I don't let it dry out in a flake form. It's already rubbed out when I let it dry out. So that could be one thing that will help it too because you got more surface area where the moisture can evaporate from. So it'll dry out a little bit more. So you probably want it just past where you think it might be too dry, then you're pretty much right. You're right on then. 
I mean, I'll tell you, this Dan tobacco was fairly moist. I was a little worried because I had this tin squirreled away since I don't even know when I bought this shit, guys. What, August probably? And I've had it squirreled away. I didn't even know I could find the, the, the mason jar, but luckily I did. And uh, I opened it up, and I was very worried about it being too wet. And I only had a few minutes before the show. And I just came out here and did exactly what you said, Bull Shark. I just rubbed it all out. And by the time I packed my bowl, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's actually smoking pretty good. Yeah. I mean, if you I let it, if you rub it out and just let it sit for, I mean, like I said, it's just it's just science. If you if you rub it out and then let it dry out, you got more surface area, a smaller air, plus you got a smaller piece to dry out. It's going to dry out a lot quicker. So you you want to do a quicker smoke, you know. But I don't know. That's all. That's just the way I've, I've always done it. See, with this one, I just came out here and pulled it straight out of my mason jar. The, the tin popped. I've had it shut so long, probably since October. And I just, I didn't even rub it out. I folded it this time. And it's doing quite well straight off that. Every time I do the fold technique, which is the proper way to do a flake. I don't know. Show us I, how to do it, that, Bullshark. It's a plug. Well, no, I can't I can do, do that, that worth a fuck. All right. Basically, you take, you take the flake which I don't know if I can see it, like this. Mm -hmm. This is how they do it at McBaron. This is how I learned to do it. You, you fold it in half like this, and you can actually do one and a half flakes, and then take it and then fold it in half this way. And basically, so like you, hamburger, then hot dog. Yes, exactly. Okay. Which I'm getting it all over my MacBook. So anyway, you, make, you basically make a plug, and you kind of just press down on it. You, put, you basically stick that like that inside your bowl. And you can kind of you can kind of rough up the the ends of it like that to make it kind of shaggy, and right. just shove it down in there. And you'll see when you do that, which is going all over my damn MacBook, you'll get these little pieces of fine tobacco. So when you press down on the top of the flake into your bowl, you can take that little piece of tobacco that fell off, and for like basically it's like a little tinder, you just sprinkle on the top of the flake and then light it up with that. It helps light up a little bit better. That's Does that supposed actually to be the smoke good? Way. That's how I'm smoking it right now. Yeah, that's. The pro that is the true way to smoke a, fly a flake tobacco. But I was talking to Pete Johnson about, you know, he was talking about smoking flakes. He never even knew was you were smoking tobacco. To yeah, it was, remember we, yeah, you yeah. were there. Yeah. Tobacco, remember I, he, I was like, I was there, dog. Yeah. So, but he, remember he was saying he didn't even know you were supposed to fold a flake. He yeah. just has always rubbed it out because everybody rubbed sees it rubs it out. Yeah. Because it's so easy to do that. I mean, basically, that's what all, you know, like ready rubbed. You know, from Dunhill, all That's that all is a, it's a flake. It, it, they just already rubbed it out for you, or you ribbon cut. I mean, basically, whenever you rub out a flake, you just turn it into basically like you know shaggy ribbons. You know, the same thing. More or less. So, but every time that I do the fold and pack technique, I I plug my pipe tobacco. I've never been able to smoke it correctly doing it that way. So I just rub rub it out every time. Jared, how the fuck are you doing it? I just pretty much folded exactly like he just did. I gave it a hamburger fold, a hot dog fold, stuck it in here, and just kind of mashed it around so it filled up the pipe, kind of broke it up a little bit as it went in, and and I lit it. And I've done that the last three times I smoked a flake, and I think it actually smokes better than when I rub it out. It should. I mean, how does it the ash? Are better. you just smoking ash the entire time? No. It stays pretty solid. I mean, I'm about to relight here, but this is solid. Yeah. It's it's going to be a tight plug in there. Yeah, but it smokes fine. I'm kind of liking this method better than rubbing it out first, giggity. Well, Jeff was asking how Ben kept his pins and lit. I was like, it's because he's over there fucking... Blowing his load every time he's smoking a bowl. That's, well, that, that's true, too. Yeah. His love for the tobacco keeps it lit. Exactly. His man juice. Speaking of man juice, when I see you, Ben, uh, here in about two weeks, I'm going to be bringing you a special surprise, and it ain't sexual. Damn it. I know, man. You, you know what I taught my daughter food. today? I taught her how to go around and spank people's asses and call it, and go, Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm like horrible father, but it's so cute. Um, but yeah, I'll bring you. I'm bringing you a bag of Penzance. Mm -hmm. 
I know he's already getting half chub, and we're still two weeks away. All I request is you must just remind me a day before or two days before we travel. Just shoot me an email and just say, hey, Logan, remember to bring me my gift. Okay. You might get a sexual favor in return for your gift. I know, man. Bull Shark's <laughs> taking care of me, though. Bull Shark, unfortunately, he doesn't know this, but j- the people at old uh, General Cigar, they're a little tight on their schedules. So uh, I don't, I can't have another inner tobacco Belgian Royal Ojo <laughs> incident. No. Where I slept through literally a fire alarm. Um, it could have burned alive, so yeah. I'm going to need an alarm clock, and his name is Bullshark. You pretty much have to just take me with you wherever you go so I can wake you up. I'm you. telling you. I don't know how, for people, this is kind of an inside thing. With, with, I was in the back at our, well, no, we weren't even in the back then. We were still in, in Belgium touring no. the Royal Were we in Belgium? Were we in Brussels or were we in Antwerp? We were in Antwerp, were we? We were in Westerloo. Westerloo, yeah, that's right. So... So these, I don't know who it was, some jackass on the floor above us. You can't smoke in there. So I know who somebody it was. was, yeah. I'll try to give them <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah, don't say yeah. names, but I know who the jackass was. We know who the jackass was. So this is jackass kept opening up this door to smoke out the corner. You know, the crack in the door, or whatever. When they did that, they set off the fire alarms. Yep. And every time they cracked it, it set off the damn alarm until they shut it again. So yep. the damn thing went off like at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And, then and it, it wasn't off. for a second, apparently. It was no. quite a lot. Like it was minutes for a at a time. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty loud. Yeah. And yours truly slept through it like a rock. I have no idea how. Well, I can just, I can believe it. How, I don't know, but I completely believe it. I mean, I can tell you. I lived kind of a sheltered life growing up on the west central Missouri farm known as Lawler Farms. And my parents coddled me because I was the only, first, well, I wasn't the only child, but I was the first child. And I was the pride of the family. Well, my parents made the fucking mistake, which I will never make this mistake. But they made the mistake of never forcing me to get up to an alarm clock. And so all through high school, I never had to get up to an alarm clock. I always had my mom or my dad wake me up. So I went off into college. My parents were worried that I would actually flunk out of college because I would not be able to get myself out of bed and go to class. But then I joined a fraternity, and I had 23 pledge brothers to get me out of class my pledge semester. And then the other seven semesters, I had the pledges to get me out of bed. So and or and I had a, a girlfriend. And then out of high college, I had a girlfriend, and she woke me up. And then Allie woke me up, and. When I travel, I'll have Ben or Jared or Shooter wake me up. Yeah, this or I have is the, the maids that, when I'm in India wake me up. I just can't get up. This is the guy that can sleep through his alarm clock going off, the TV being on, me yelling at him to get up, and me throwing pillows at him before he finally, after about three pillows, will go, what? Yeah. I would not be a very good James Bond. He doesn't understand what he's getting into. <laughs> because I'm going to come in there... Like a goddamn drill instructor, it's not going to be pretty. Thing is, I can be quite violent <laughs> if you wake me up in a tizzy. Allie finds that exactly. out every That's day. Why I'm kind of like I'm kind of diplomatic about it. I'm like, yeah, you need to get up because I just don't feel like dealing with asshole Logan. <laughs> just asshole Logan. But anyways, not enough about my sleep habits or how my parents coddled me as a small child. Um, so, what do you guys think about this old tobacco? Dan, Ironsides. dot com. It's it's not bad. Um, it's definitely got. I I definitely taste the Latakia. It does have a mussiness about it. I get a slight little bit of florals, but not too much. I'm basically getting smoky mussiness right now. It's got a little bit of creaminess every now and then, but like right now, I'm not getting it at all. But I think it's almost. I I, mean, I agree with you. Like. I mean, it's a Latakia bomb, but are you getting like almost like a mustardy type note, like where it's just like like a twang or a sharpness to it? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I guess. Because it's like like fucking off putting. Like it's like it's like you described it, Ben, but then it's like that mustard note, and it's kind of like. Well, it's like, like it's almost vinegarish, kind of like a. 
I don't know how to describe it to be honest. I don't but like a vinegar, like I think, is a pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it doesn't stay that long. I mean, it comes and goes, but it's just, it's not ideal. It's not what I want to be smoking. But see, I, say that. I like it. Something about it's different to me that I kind of, I like it a little better than the other at the moment. Really? The other what? Yeah, the last week smoke. Penzance? You gotta go there. You're uh, fucking nuts. No Penzance for you, dick. Well, no. No it's bag of Penzance for you. Got a little kick to it. I kind of. Can we turn his camera off? How do we do that? We need to. We need to kick him out of here. Well, I would need to smoke some more Penzance to make a full-on comparison because I've had that couple bowls last week, but a oh, heck it was a weasel press. Uh-huh. No, I'm just saying to do a full comparison, but right now. I'm thinking I like it more than I did the Penzance. And don't act like no, Ben. You don't even know because I gave old motherfucking Moonbeam over here uh, a fucking whole two ounce ten of Penzance. He's got I'm more than enough. I'm not gonna not smoke it. I'm gonna oh. smoke plenty of it. It wasn't bad. I can't even talk to you right now. <laughs> I will say, Ben. I know you weren't on the show last week, but I mean, I think Penzance is good. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good tobacco. I think I gave it like a four. Um, but I do buy it every chance that I get, not because I necessarily love it so much, but just because I know there's people out there that will overpay for it, and it's nice being able to have it and then give it to my gifts like you. know, like You can yeah. just be like, here you go. So that's why I do it. Um, but I will say it's like there's cigars that people stock up on. Like, for example, like the, the Tatuai TAA 2000, like 2012, the 13 was crappy. Um, the 2014 was okay. 2015 was great. But like most of those people stock up because those are typically, other than the 13, are typically pretty fucking good cigars. Like uh-huh. you know what I mean? And people go nuts over that. But like I just don't see that level of quality in the Penzance that I see like a Tatuai TA. Do you see what I'm saying or am I just completely... Huh. I figured it would have blew my mind more. I'm not saying it's not good. Well, <clears throat> the only thing I can say about it is, <clears throat> and this happens to me a lot with movies. When somebody comes like, oh my God, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I've seen it three times in a theater. It's the most awesome thing ever. You have this, now you you got my you know thought that, Oh my God! This movie is going to be, you know, up to this level. It's going to be the yeah. greatest thing ever. And when you go, you know, it's good, but but you had such an elevated expectation of it that there was no way it could possibly reach that that expectation. So, you know, I mean, I can I, see what you mean, but so for all those marketing people out there, because I I do have a marketing uh, BSBA and uh, marketing MBA. What you're speaking of, Ben? Fun fact. It's called the expectatory yap theory. It's where your expectations or preconceived notions actually affect truly how you would rate something. And what you're saying is exactly right. But I still had, I will say though, is I will say that I expected to have, based on what I heard out of the TAA this year, the one that was the blend was very similar exact to the 2013 or 12 that everyone just fucking pissed their panties all over. Um, I went to that thinking it was going to be pretty much the same thing, and I was, like, pleasantly surprised. Like, it was fucking awesome. So I never had it. I hadn't had any 2015. This, there's only one place that I can get it from. It's uh, Harbor Cigars in Dessa, Florida, and I haven't been over there to visit them in quite a while. So I haven't had the 2015, but I actually have a 2012 Tattoo YTA sitting right there right now in my recliner. So, and I, I, I thought it was recliner. Amazing. Because I was going to smoke it. That's a good choice, my friend. Yeah. That's right. a great fucking cigar. i tell you, and also Penzance. To me, it's kind of like, okay, this is happening with me cigars. When you have a, when you have a cigar, and you're, you're, it's like a shitty time right now. You're aggravated. You got a headache or something. You know, you're fucking getting an argument with somebody at the cigar shop at a debate. And they're a total fucking douchebag. <clears throat> and you're smoking that cigar, that cigar is not going to be good. I don't oh, care no. what it is. So, And also the opposite is true. If you're having an amazing time 
it's like a moment in your life that you're going to remember forever, and you're having a cigar. That cigar is probably the best tasting cigar you've ever had in your life at that moment, too. Probably true. Now, see, when I had Penzance the first time, my headquarters at the uh, at the sector at the time that I oversaw all the IT for was based in Charlottesville, Virginia. So they wanted me to come up there to meet with their IT team just to kind of see how they do their policies and procedures and, you know, meet everybody and, you know, because I was the lead here. They wanted me to beat the lead there. So we kind of coordinate how we're going to do, you know, support and all that. Tech so, stuff. yep. Right. So they're like, okay, well, you know, they said, well, if you want to bring your wife, bring your wife on up here. So we, I did. I took an Amtrak train, which was stupid, and went up to Charlottesville. And while we are there, I knew it was in Virginia. So I said, hey, I'm in Virginia. I've just awesome pipe tobacco in this area. So I'm going to hunt it out. Well, okay. I went to this pipe shop, and I, I, I cannot remember the name of it at the time, but it's just off the University of Virginia's campus. Now, remember, I'm there in the, I'm in there in the fall, and it, it, at that time, it's the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's, it, it's the, scene, the, the scenery is unbelievable. All the colors, the leaves are changing. I'm in the mountains. Which I don't, I mean I grew up on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I got beaches and swamps and bayous. I don't have mountains, so just the atmosphere was amazing. I go in there. I'm, I, me and my wife sit down. I'm talking to this guy about pipes. That owns a place or he's running it anyway, and he is super nice, dude. He, this is when I just got into pipes, and he's teaching me all this stuff, dropping all this knowledge on me, and he pulls out two tobaccos, Esoterica Margate, which yes. was his favorite, and Penzance. And I'm sitting there, he loads me up a bowl of Penzance, and I'm smoking it, and we're having an amazing time. Even my wife's enjoying herself, which is odd. And you know, <laughs> Which I, is odd. Well, she doesn't like cigar smoke and all that. She just tolerates it for me. Mm. So I'm sitting there smoking this, I'm thinking, man, this stuff is amazing. He's, and he's, he's one of those people that when he describes you know, the tobacco and all that, it's almost like listening to Robert Burns, you know, go on about one of his poems and stuff. And it's just, it was just his good storyteller, you know, and we, we get right next door, right next door to it is Miller's bar where Dave Matthews created yes. the Dave Matthews band. And that's where he was a bartender at and all that. So we, we, we leave there, go next door. We're hanging out have a beer at Miller's. It was just an amazing time. And I was smoking Penzance the entire time. So not only was Penzance awesome, but the time that I first had it was awesome. So my thought on Penzance is probably way overboard compared to a normal person's pen, you know, thought of how good it is. If that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. But if it hasn't, has it lived up to that expectation since then? Yeah. Every, every time I have it, it's like, oh, this is so good. You know, but I mean, the thing is, and y'all know this too, I'm a rig. I'm a big GLP's whore, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's got some them English blends that are just absolutely freaking amazing in their own right. Like Gaslight, right now, I can't get enough Gaslight. That's one of the best blends I've had in quite a while. And uh, what was the other one I was smoking? Uh, oh, Quiet Nights. Quiet Nights and uh, Gaslight. But Gaslight's just the best one ever. Those two have been amazing, and they're both great English blends. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Lamborghini, Ferrari. Yeah, they're both awesome. It's just, you know, you know, two sides of a coin, I guess. It's just, they're both amazing, to buy, you know, amazing tobacco. So, I don't know. Penzance is, is well, I don't know if we'll ever be knocked off a pedestal. I mean, the, th the thing that came the closest is probably Balkan Sobrani. I mean. That, agreed. But Gaslight? Mm, good stuff. It's close. It's up there too. Really is. So, I was gonna ask you that. Um, is that I know you bought a couple of tins from Pipes and Cigars when they were like cheap as monkey nuts, and did you just completely rage on that shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought a plus, and I bought you know uh, several through the Cigar Fed store. You know, I bought more Chelsea Morning GLP stuff. I bought, uh, um, and that's where I got Quiet Night. I got Six Pence. Uh, what else? Navigator. I got a lot of GLP stuff. And I got a couple of, uh, of the Seattle Pipe 
pipe club stuff, which I've been amazed with them, a lot of that. But pot latch that we did. Dude, that shit's good. That Fair blew point. me away, dude. Really. I, that's something I would always have in stock. It's so good. But I bought cool. some of that. I bought some uh, calf sand blue in the flake because I heard the flake was, was way high. better. I haven't had it yet. I haven't opened it. But uh, I actually took it with me to Houston, but I never got a chance to smoke my pipe there. So I didn't, I didn't get a chance to try that out. Oh, and, oh, and I bought Virginia cream, too. But... Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I bought. I bought some more, some of the Dunhills too. <coughs> like I got uh, a thing of Dunhill Flake. I got some uh, Deluxe Navy Rolls, Aperitif. Um, what's the other one I got? I got another one of the Dunhills too. Oh, London London Mixture, which I heard London Mixture is amazing. Really, really good stuff. But I've never had it. But uh, yeah, I got a, I got quite a bit of stuff. But. And usually what I do is a lot of times I'll buy the GLP stuff, and I just it, on every ten that I get, I'll take a sharpie and I write the month and the year that I that I got it. That you, you personally know. got it. Exactly. So like, okay, for instance, here's some uh, GLP Chelsea Morning, right? Yep. That's when I bought it. Two thousand eleven. And I don't know if it'll show, but the the actual the tens kind of bulging out. That's, so with, that's when good stuff's happening. Right. So what I thought, you know what? I don't want to open this tin. <laughs> Let me buy a new tin and see how much I'd really do like the Chelsea Morning, which I had that for the first time last night. It was pretty good, too. And that very equivalent. I mean, it's not the same, but isn't it's like GL Pieces rendition of early morning pipe, more yes. or less? Yeah. Yeah, on that one, <clears throat> I actually think I like early morning pipe probably a little bit better. Um, but it's still it's different enough to where you can you can justify having both of them. <laughs> Everybody has a version, honestly, of early morning pipe, my mixture nine six five, and nightcap. Those three are absolute benchmarks in English blends. So yes. everybody has a derivative of those three, and I mean it's a good it's a good one, but honestly, I'd rather just have gaslight over all that stuff. I need to smoke. I have a couple of tins. I just need to smoke it. Quit being a bitch. You know what we need to do is we need to list out everything that Logan's got in his 35 pounds of pipe tobacco. It's actually probably more than that now. And then just have our listeners start picking what they want us to smoke. I'm never going to smoke it. And I've got some old ass shit. That's not a bad idea. Do a viewer's choice. That's what we should do. Once a month, have a show that's viewer's choice. And they get to choose whatever we want, whatever yeah. they want to smoke? Yep, whatever they want. I like the idea. Viewer's choice. Okay. We can probably make that happen. I'll have to figure out if I want to, if I feel comfortable sharing my entire cellar with people because I don't want no crazy motherfuckers showing up on my doorstep trying to rub my ass blind, you know what will happen. They'll get bit by a fucking doodle. A <laughs> doodle? You want me to bring one of my Glocks or something? Dude, I'm packing a Japanese 9 millimeter. A Shit, Japanese fuck you up. Hey, this, is, this is the guy that answered the UPS guy at the door with a 9 millimeter in his hand. Come on, man. I did. Because he fucking, first of all, I don't give a fuck. I understand, Mr. UPS man that it's like Christmas time and you're backed up and you're delivering packages. But when you ring someone's doorbell at 9 o'clock at night and they have a small baby and they're trying to get some sleep because the baby's actually sleeping and then you ring it once and you ring it again and you we don't expect you, then yes, you're going to have, you're going to be answering the door because you need a signature with the guy in his boxers holding a gun. I can't help it. I can't help it. Tell me you haven't done that. Who are you referring to? I do it like once a week. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Jared, do you have guns in your home? I'm, I live in Texas. That doesn't mean shit. I have guns. I've never seen your guns. i got a few. Keeping them hidden. Oh, yeah, welcome to the gun show. Moonbeam! Uh, <laughs> sun's out, guns out. Come on, sun's man. out. Moonbeam's out, guns out. Um, but yeah, it's a Japanese nine millimeter that my brother picked up overseas. 
when he was stationed in Okinawa, Japan. Let me just say, it's not the most reliable thing, and I've actually been in the market to actually buy a little something better. So if you I mean, got, I'm not a big gun guy. So I'm if you have any recommendations, <laughs> massive. Dude, like guns, pipes, dude. You fucking man's man over there. Do you collect boats too? No, I quit that, dude. You quit collecting boats. <laughs> dude, it's just... That's an expensive collection right there. After the BP incident here, well, you know... Right. No reason to have boats anymore right here. Is it still all fucked up down there? It will never be non-fucked up. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. I don't... They, okay, you had a massive, giant oil well spewing shit into the ocean for over a month. Hmm. It's got to go somewhere. Where does it go? All on the seabed floor, up into the our, you know the coastal areas. I mean, dude, they're still they're still finding tar balls every down there on the Bear Islands. They're finding them all. They're even finding them in Florida, on the beaches on the Gulf of Mexico and Florida and so. stuff. Still really? finding the tar balls. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't show trust the water. I mean, and they're I mean even while we were staying in Galveston, my wife and I. They were talking about issues there, which is, I tell you, Galveston, that water is just disgusting. <laughs> yes, Galveston it's is a so nasty bad. beat. Nasty but, uh, beat. But they, yeah, there's this uh, bacteria that's in the water, and it's in all warm water. It's called uh, Vibro, or I can't remember, is it Vibro or uh, vi I can't remember. But it's a flesh-eating bacteria. Anyway, when it gets real hot, it plumes, and it's everywhere. Well, if it you say flesh eating, flesh mm -hmm. eating, yeah, we've oh. had people, and it, I actually had, remember having a algebra teacher when I was going to, to college in '93. He actually was cleaning crabs, and in one of the, you know, on the crabs, you got the two points on the on the edge of the yep. uh, carapace on the top. Well, he poked his poked his pinky with Ooh. one of them. The flesh eating bacteria was on that crab, got in there, and he lost his finger. Yeah, so it's, it's called, always been in the water, but it's, it's kind of rare. Vibrosis. That's it. What's it called? Yeah. Vibrosis. Oh. It's some bad shit. Well, ever since I live on the coast, oils, too, so I know about it. Yeah, since the BP oil spill, though, it's gotten really bad all on the Gulf Coast. All Florida, Gulf Coast, all the way to Texas. It's everywhere. And it's gotten to be a lot worse. Why? Because the oil's heating up the water, I guess? I have no clue of why. But it's just ever since that's happened, we've had in incidences of, of people losing their legs, losing an arm, losing a hand because that fleshy bacteria gets in there. And you just have a small nick on your body somewhere, gets in, eats it away. You know, you first you start to feel like you have a really bad flu, and you start to try to self-medicate because you think you got the flu or something, and it's not. Now, once you get almost into a coma stage, you say, I should go to the hospital. By that time, they got to cut your leg off or something. So I was like, "Fuck boats, don't need them." I got other shit I can spend money on. Do you know? Do so. You know what boat stands for? Bust out another thousand. Yeah, I mean, I used to go offshore fishing a lot. You know, growing up, we always had large boats because on the Mississippi Gulf Coast we have barrier islands, and to get out to the deep water, you got to run for quite a ways to go out to the oil rigs. There, there, there's one set that's about 40 miles away. Another one that's about 60, 65 miles out. Jeez. And you got to run that far to get out to go get, you know, decent snapper, grouper, you know, ling or uh, cobia or lemonfish, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what they call them in Texas, but you, you don't have to go so far out. But if you want tuna, any of the bigger game fish, you got to go really far out. Well, shit. Isn't that international waters? No, it's still U.S. waters. I thought anything out. 12 miles off the coast was considered international waters. I don't give a fuck. I was just pulling a snapper out of that bitch. I was, I was say, yeah. not fucking pirate. Once you that far out, it is international. I think it's 12 miles. But anyways, so you have to run that far out. Yeah, in, in Mississippi we do. Because there's not enough deep water. Like, uh, like when you go to southern Louisiana, like Venice, Louisiana, or Empire, which is at the very tip, of, you know, down there, you you run 10 miles, you're catching bluefin tuna. And it's, it's deep right there, you know. So, it's just a huge drop-off. Exactly, and that's where you get a lot of large game fish, you know, sailfish or the marlin. So, right. Yeah. But all that's out there. But I mean, shit, you got to pay so much for the, for the you got to 
by the big ass boat, you're talking, you know, 27, 30 foot or bigger. You got to pay insurance. The gas is astronomical to get out that far. It's just not worth it. You might as well just go buy the shit at the local store, especially when you got such limits on some of those fish. Like snapper, it's like you can get two snapper and you're done. Yeah, it's crazy. Super. It's not worth it. So I'd rather buy guns and knives and yeah, knives like too. That. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, lots and lots of knives. What else do you got? Well, let's see. You got guns, knives, yeah. pipe tobacco, cigars. Yeah. What else? What else do I collect? You collect there? comics? I used to heavily. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. I would love to see your house like just pack rat central. Yeah. I still have all the comics too, every one of them. I didn't lose anything, and none of those are Katrina. I did lose all of my baseball and football cards that I had. Well, the baseball cards probably weren't worth shit, anyways. <laughs> yeah, but they, it comes back around. It's all you know, cyclic. It comes right back around. Yeah, that's probably true. But I had like a Michael Jordan rookie card gone. Gone. Yeah, I, I mean, you you name a famous football player, I had their rookie card gone, completely gone. So that that sucks, you know. But it is what it is. Not a big deal. But yeah, I still have the comics. I mean, because I thought, I don't know, why not? My son will love love them when he gets a little bit older. So and he might get into collecting comics too. I mean, still comics are huge. I mean, look how many damn Marvel. Movies and DC Dude, movies. Oh, shit. Now. So I don't even know what they're worth anymore because I really kept up with it. I haven't been to a comic book store in probably 15 years. So, like, which what's the most famous one you have? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I got <clears throat> probably mm. I got the first. I got the comic that Wolverine first appeared in. I got the first one Deadpool appeared in. Uh, I have to go back and look through them all. I just remember Wolverine being in there. Uh, the first Spawn comic, I remember that was a huge one. Uh, the one that Superman died in, or he got killed by Doomsday. I got, I got several, several copies of that one. Um, I don't know. I got a lot of comics. I probably have boxes. I don't know. They're probably you know that long. You know, probably, you know, they're the only one thing deep. But I probably have about ten of those full. Hmm. You know, if it's something special, like, you know, like I got a lot of editions of X-Men. Like I used to collect X-Men, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, uh, Captain America, um, Image Comics, which is where they used to have, like, uh, that was where Spawn and all that came from. I had pretty much all the Image number ones, all the, when they originally came out, all the Dark Horse comic stuff. I have a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of shit. Dude, but, I'm looking at some of this shit here. Let me just see. Superman, the man of tomorrow, 95, that ran 95 to 99. I didn't collect a whole lot of DC stuff. I did a little bit of Batman. I actually did a lot of Green Lantern. I'll, I've always loved Green Lantern. Um... A little bit of Superman and a, a you know a little bit of Batman, but mostly Marvel stuff is what I got. It's funny because I, like I don't really know shit about comics, and like all I see is Marvel. Like the only DC thing I've seen is what Fantastic Four, I think. That's Marvel. That's Marvel too. Yeah. What's DC other than Superman? Batman, Green Lantern, uh, nah. Arrow. Yeah. That's Flash. Good. Yeah. Well, you got to remember who owns Marvel. I have no idea. Disney. Oh, I guess that's right, yeah. Well, see, when I was a little kid, though, I was a huge Spider-Man fanatic. So that's kind of what, how I got into comic books, because I've always been a huge Spider-Man fan. So I collected everything Spider-Man, you know. And I used to draw a lot when I was a kid in, in the high school. I drew a, a ton of stuff. So then they kind of went into comics. I love artwork so much, comics. Spider-Man, good stories. All right. So that's where it all came from. Look at you, Bullshart. And if my son gets, he just turned seven Saturday. If he wants to get into comic books, I'm going to be like, hey, oh, yeah, son. Hmm. Oh, man. 
So what do you guys think about this Dan Tobacco USS Constitution? It, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. You know? It does have that musty note with a bit of a twang to it, which is kind of what I like about it. You like that? In this one, I'm liking it. Not always. But something about this one, I do like it. What are you smoking out of, Bull Shark? My Dagner. My little Dagner. How's uh, that going for you? Man, this fucking pipe is awesome. Best money I've ever spent on a pipe. Well, besides my Sir Jopico, but I mean, I can't compare the two really, but it's really, really awesome pipe. I love this pipe. I'm so glad I got a hold of this thing. Because everything I put in it, it smoked really well. I mean, really, really, really well. And it's short. It's easy to throw in my pocket and my jacket and just go somewhere. It's so easy to do with. I wasn't sure how I like a little short, stubby pipe. Even though it seems to be this is all the rage. It's like really thick, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's thick. It's still wow. thick like a normal pipe, but it's it's just really short stem on it. And if you go to any of the pipe groups on like Facebook or any of the forums, you'll see like a lot of people have been smoking these little short pipes like that. And I never really understood it. I thought like, it would look kind of goofy, and like I thought they would be hot because they're so small. Right, you would think. Nope. Smoke like a champ, and they're easily portable. I think that's why they're so popular. I think I throw this in my in my jeans pocket and just go on. You know, it's perfect, perfect little size. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a a small pipe like that. That might have to be something I invest in. Yeah, I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna order another Dagner pipe. I want because I want to like this is English. I want to get a Virginia pipe that's dedicated to the Virginias, and I'm gonna get another not another one of these, but a, some another Dagner short stubby pipe, but like a different style. And it's kind of weird. I don't know why I do this, but like rusticated stuff usually goes, to, which isn't really rusticated. I mean, it's just kind of you know dark. It's a little bigger. bit, but it I, to me when I when I think when I get one of those, it's gonna be English. If right. it's a smooth pipe like my 320. Seven Ellie. There you go. Smooth. That's going to be a Virginia pipe. I don't know why I do that, but I do it every single time. Hmm. Weird. But it's also a good good visual cue of what I got to have to remember. Is that an English or is that a Virginia? Well, I know if it's rusticated, it's English. If it's not, it's a Virginia. I don't smoke a whole lot of Virginia, so every pipe I have is English. Well, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. I, I can see that because like I started thinking about. My Virginia blends, I honestly don't smoke a whole lot of Virginia blends either. This is few and far between. And honestly, most of them are GLP Virginias. You know? For my estate buy, I've got like two pounds of like five-year-old Samuel Gayfoot uh, full Virginia flake, and I'll probably never smoke it. I've got a tin of that that I put up a long time ago. I've never opened it, so I've never had it either. But people freak out over that one, so... You should smoke it. I need to. That's where a viewer's choice is going to come in. And we definitely need to, in the next couple of weeks, um, take out the, um, for science, the, uh, the gold sliced and the 5100 red cake that's been aging for the last year in a tin slash in a mason jar slash in a bag. And then throw your shit in the mix. Ten years old. And tell the difference. Ten year old. I can't believe you haven't you haven't opened that bitch in ten years. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Fucking nuts. Same with the uh, Boswell's aromatics that I sent to Moonbeam. There, I, it was can in two thousand and six. I didn't open it until I decided. You know, I almost sent this to it because I think I'll like it. I didn't open it until then either. It's some good stuff. And I didn't even, farm. Yeah, I didn't even send you the best one because I don't know where the fuck the tin's at, but it's Berry Cobbler. It's the best one. Well, you sent me one of those. I did? Yeah. I didn't think I sent that. Look how fucking organized Moonbeam shit is. Wow. That's the best one to me. It's my stuff. Of course it's going to be that organized. Oh, no, 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 no. Was it that when it was Christmas cookie? Oh, that's, yeah. Because you that's didn't get what that one. Yeah. That's somewhere. That one's the shit. 
It's so good. It's between that and Barry Cobble, which one I like the best. But, uh... Yeah. Probably Christmas cookie. And the room going on is amazing. Obviously. It tastes like a cookie. So what did you think about it, Moonbeam? This tobacco. I am not sure why I like it, but I do. Because it, it has a musty, odd note to it underneath the smoky note. There's no sweet. It's got a twang to it. It has a real bad twang to it. But uh, something about it that I like. That I, I've had tobaccos with a twang that I don't care for. This twang is different. I don't know why I like fat chicks. I just like fat chicks. That's basically what Jared just said. Because I'm going to tell, tell you that you called her fat. Because they give good head. That's I'm going to tell, tell you you called her fat. Who? Who did I call fat? Well, my wife, I guess. Cause I didn't call her wife fat. You just did, vicariously. <laughs> Are you going to play that game now? Uh, but no, I mean, I, I can see how you'd like it. I mean, it's not bad by any means, and we need to give this thing a rating. But, like, I don't know, just coming off Penzance and basically people saying that, you know, oh, yeah, this is a, you know, a good equivalent. And, you know, I, I guess I can kind of maybe see a little bit. But first of all, all I have to tell you is that, Getting old iron sights is probably just as complicated because uh, not carried as many places. And actually, I had some trouble finding this tin. It's not always in stock, but I mean, I don't know. I just between that, like musty, and not musty in like a good barnyardy kind of sense either. Like more musty, like mothballs, like maybe metallic-y. It's I've dealt in antiques my whole life. It really does have that musty antique note to it that I get from old stuff. and I don't know. Maybe that's what it is because it, I mean, it that is that kind of musty. I do like it, though. And then it's just got that sharp kind of like like mustardy, you know, vinegar kind of twang to it. And it's just kind of a dirty finish. So coming off of Penzance, which, like I said already, I mean, wasn't my, my favorite. I mean, it's not my most favorite thing. But, yeah, I mean, I'll buy it, and I like it. It's good, but I don't go goo-goo-ga-ga over it. Um but can, trying to back that up to that, no fucking way. Three stars. What? Okay, remind me again what the rating structure is on that. So, Ben, how many shows have you done on Pipe Dummies, broadcast on Cigar Federation around the world? i got to make up my own structure. Um, oh, no. Seth tried to do that and ask him how well that turned out. Yeah, but he's all alfalfa sprout eating yoga nude yoga in the morning type dude. We he don't is, but now that he's got a baby, he ain't doing much of nothing. He just, that baby's got him whipped. Um, so the rating system, for those who have never listened, it's out of five stars, five no. being the highest, one being the lowest, five stars, a.k.a. stock up. I'd purchase multiple ounces for smoking and to age it. Four stars, keep in the rotation. Purchase enough to keep it in the rotation. Three stars, when it's on sale. I wouldn't pay full retail, but I'd purchase if it was on sale. Two stars. Only when it's free. I would smoke a bowl if it was free and had nothing else to smoke. One star. Never again. A.K.A. Turd Burglar. Wouldn't smoke it again, even if it was given it to me for free, and I had nothing else. It's definitely not that. Um, you think two? I don't know if it's that low. I'd probably like a two and a half. Damn! I got all- that's the lowest rate we've ever given. Now, I mean, no, Ben, be be negative, dog. It's to me, it's like there's, it's just nothing special about it. You know, what I mean, it's I agree, hundred percent. Like, there's about a hundred things that sitting in this in my man cave that I kind of want to smoke over it. I mean, to me, it's it's gotten harsher as we've gone as we've been talking. Like to me, it's gotten. I got my palate feels like it's set set on fire. Yeah, like, like I ate like a uh, like a red hot or something. Like, kind of, like, yeah. It's weird. Um, it's kind of uh, kind of dried my mouth out a little bit. I, all I'm getting is a lot of a lot of Kia smokiness. Right, this is what I'm getting now. I get a lot of a lot of Kia smokiness. I get a lot of twang and mussiness. So it's like I don't really care. For this. I mean, 
if I had, I would smoke it again. It's not that bad. It's kind of intriguing because it's kind of like, I'm kind of like the way, you know, Jared is with it. Like that twang, when I first detected it, it was kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's not bad twang. But like as it's gotten more closer to the end of the bowl, it's like gotten to be where now it's a little bit fucking annoying. You know, it's not like irritating or tor- terrible, but it's a little annoying now. So it's definitely gotten strong. I'll agree. My tongue has that tingle coat. I mean, I can tell I'm smoking this tobacco. It's going to hang around for a while. I feel like I need like one of them damn ice scrapers and just go <laughs> and pull across my palate. You know? I can see that. I'm not going to argue that it's not powerful. It's not. It's taken over my palate. It's pungent. It isn't something I'm going to run to. I don't want to stockpile it. I guess I'm going to give my rating. I'm going to actually go right with Logan, even though I seem to like it more. I'm only going to rate it a three also. I'm not going to run out and get some, but I would definitely grab a 10 if it was cheap enough. I do enjoy it, but I don't need a ton of it on hand. You know, and it kind of annoys me a little bit because people say, oh, this is like a Penzance alternative. Fuck that shit. Whatever. No, don't, don't even bring that up ever again. I mean, that bring that weak shit to the playground. Yeah. In the, in the beginning, I could see some similarities, but they faded about, you know, quarter of the way through the bowl for me. I was like, no, this is not even close now. No. I mean, it, it, it diverged so far. Like, it, you're right. It did. At the very first few puffs, I got like, oh, well, I, yeah, I guess, kind of. But as I smoked, it was like, Mm-mm, not no, not even close. I don't even know what they're thinking. Yeah, it, I, know, I wouldn't compare it. I don't but know. I do have something I want to. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say maybe the original CAO, CAO Ironsides. I don't know if this is the same blend or not. From what I could read, it supposedly is the same blend. Mm-hmm. But That's what I could read, too. But kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit, it's like maybe the CEO blend, maybe that one was closer to what the people are saying. It was like, kind of like a Penzance. I, maybe. I don't know. This now is not. No. I will say, I'm going to have to send you guys this because I've got some. Shooter knows what I'm talking about. I haven't smoked it yet. But I've got a guy, when I go to travel to Boston to see one of the clients, I was stopping a, a smoke shop there, Watch City Cigar in uh, Framingham, Massachusetts. And that's where I picked up the four bags of Penzance, by the way. But anywho, he has a house blend called Ahab's Comfort. And he gave me a little bit, you know, when I spent, I don't know, an atrocious amount on that pipe tobacco. And he swears that it is very similar to Penzance. So maybe we're going to have to divvy up what I got and see see what we're working with. Any of the esoterica blends are so old and so secretive. I, I mean, I just don't see how any blend can really come close to it. I mean, and they don't even put it put out very much of it ever during the year. So I don't know. I'm, I'm always interested. It always piques me when somebody says, just, "Just, just like Penzance." All right. Good luck. Yeah. Have fun, dog. Have fun. So. With that, any parting words, Moonbeam or Bull Sharp? Moonbeam has one thing to say here since we've been putting this Moonbeam name to the ground here. Uh, even Shooter mentioned something. I need to go check out a site, and I've been looking at it in between chatting and what we've been doing called Moonshine Pipes. Oh, yeah, I got one. No, nah, dog. They make some pretty sweet-looking pipes. That guy's a sellout. A sell- okay, what? Wait, get, come on, finish that. Okay, let me tell you why I believe this. And I don't think, what's his name, Jonathan Lazaro or whatever. I don't know what his name is. But all I know about this guy, and this is, and I, like, let me just rephrase, if you're like some big pipe guy, or you're listening to Moonside Pipes, I don't know you. This is just my perception on what I perceived of being a digital nomad and being on the interwebs. I feel like this guy was like making some really boutique pipes in his garage and like kicking a lot of ass, making a name for himself. And then all of a sudden, he gets hooked up with, uh, you know, Pipes and Cigars, a.k.a. Cigars International, a.k.a. General Cigars, a.k.a. Scandinavian Tobacco, and is a big dog now. And he's putting out, you know, these crappy 
you know, pipe tobacco blends. He's selling his shit for under what he was selling it on smoking pipes, but he's still making his own pipes. I don't know. I, I just feel like he kind of sold out. Mm-mm. No, <clears throat> because in the, in the knife industry, this happens a lot. Oh, you'll have, you'll have, okay. For instance, there, okay, there's this, I, I'll give an example. Please. <clears throat> All right, there's this custom knife maker that's really well known in the special operations community. His name is Ernest Emerson. Makes amazing fucking knives. Um, <clears throat> he has a knife that became really famous called the CQC6, and it got to be super popular. Well, I think it was Benchmade. I think it's who he first hooked up with. But basically, he made he, he sold the idea to them. He still makes a custom version of it, but he sold or licensed the, the, the pattern to Benchmade and said, okay, you can make a production version of this, which basically the same knife, but it had a little bit cheaper of a steel for the blade. It wasn't a bad steel. It was just a little bit cheaper. It wasn't hand, hand ground or nothing like that or forged or whatever. One it boutique was, at all. No, <clears throat> but they made it. It was a basically a lower-cost version. It cost... A th- about a third of what his per- his version went. Right. It's still a good knife. It wasn't the same as his custom made one. His custom made ones are just like built like a tank. They're amazing. Right. <clears throat> and now he's teamed up with a company called Kershaw, which I've heard of them. they make some really good knives, but they make a lot of uh, lower end knives. And like they they use like injection molded plastics for their handles. They use some. Uh, uh, Chinese steel and some Scandinavian uh, steels that are kind of equivalent to some other stuff, but they're a little bit lower grade to, uh, compared to some of the American steels, but a little bit step up <clears throat> instead of using super grade steels, which means that his there's some of his they, he may build some patterns for them and to put his name on it, but it's a Kershaw knife with his name on it. But these knives are like go anywhere from thirty nine ninety nine to fifty nine ninety nine instead of three hundred and fifty to six hundred bucks a piece. It's just it's like a it's almost kinda like, you know, like a um <clears throat> you got Lexus and Toyota, you know, or Infinity Nissan, you know, Acura Honda. It's just and I think that's what they're what he did with the pipe tobacco. because he got one line and I can't even remember what it was called for uh pipe it was a pipe of cigars it did or smoke of pipes. One of the Which two. One? That has oh, his moonshine pipes. My, pipes, of course, pipes and cigars, man. <clears throat> well, they have it. So they have a, this one version. But if you look at them, the the fit and finish on them is not up to what he had. Because I have one of his pipes, and I actually bought. And what he has on there, he has two different lines that he makes. He's got the triple X series. Which is three. He, yeah, well, technically, I guess it'd be four. You got the triple X series, and then I think you got the bootlegger series, yep. and then you have some seconds, which yeah, blue which, collar, blue collar. I didn't know about the blue collar at all. Yep. But then he's got his custom one that he makes yep. one of. So that's <laughs> like four, I guess. Yeah, and the like the the one the ones off he makes, you know, they're he he actually documents. He shows like pictures of him making them. And the, that you know, devil's egg like, number two you know, is crazy looking. Yeah, so basically the one that's the what I have in this in the bootlegger is the the devil anise, and I got the second of that. And honestly, it was hard for me to find what was a second. And the very bottom, and I wish I had it laying right here. It at the bottom right here where it says moonshine pipes. There's a small little spot where the finish isn't just smooth, just perfectly smooth. And because of that, I got it for like fifty bucks off. It was well yeah, worth it. The custom pipe. Deviled egg number two I'm looking at with this German Cumberland mouthpiece. It's like a green and black wood grain looking finish. Yeah. It's 210 bucks. Yeah. So just so you know, I'm looking at his website. He's got all three series on pipes and cigars. He's got the bootlegger series. He's got the triple X. And he has... Some specific ones he made for just them called mason jar pipes, which I don't really know. The, yeah. I don't know what the fuck that is, but um, I don't know, man. I just feel like this guy was sold out, man. I just feel like he sold out, man. Yeah. I mean, you might be right. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm I just get a sense. Other side, like 
like, I see this in other other industries, the same thing. So it, to me, it's like it didn't even phase me. Like I I could see that. It's like kind of like my father making Cigar International a specific only cigar. You know, I mean, does that make the rest of their line shitty? No, not really. You know. Yeah, I don't know. It's the same thing. No, it's completely different. No, it's not. How is it different? It, here's how it's different. It's because my father doesn't advertise the fact that they're selling their shit to CI, like in terms of like private label brands. I definitely look at AJ different, knowing that how many private labels he does for CI. Okay. I'm just saying, I look at it a little differently. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand. I see your point. I understand your viewpoint. I just I don't know. Come, at, come at it from the other side. I know you are. I mean, neither right or wrong. I just no, I just, no, not at all. And I just feel like when you look at it, cigars. I mean, it is the the giant in the room, right? Pipes and cigars. And I just have a a rub. And this is partially what pissed me off was that you know I joined his mailing list and I was actually going to buy one of his pipes because that devil anus or anase or whatever mm-hmm. does look fucking tits. I will say the one with the green ring. That thing looks fucking awesome. And it was like Black Friday sale or something. Yeah, that's where I got mine. Yeah, and I was thinking about buying it. And then I was like, yeah, let me just see if there's anything better out there. And then I figured out he was on Cigars Internet or uh, Pipes and Cigars. And fuck, even with his discount shit, the shit was cheaper on fucking Pipes and Cigars. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, dog. Nah, I just kind of turned south on it. I mean, you don't think that maybe those pipes are like a lower quality briar, the fit and finish isn't as good on them? Dude, that's the same shit as fucking Rocky Patel saying that, oh, well, the 1992, the vintage 1992 that I sell to B&M's is more expensive because it's a better cigar than the one I sell to Cigars International. But they're not the same pipes. That That doesn't apply because they're not the same type of pipes. Yeah, they were. It was the exact same fucking pipe. No, it's not. Look yes, it is, dog. It was the triple X devil anus. <laughs> devil anus. You know what I'm talking about. Ants. Whatever, Ants. dog. Ants. Whatever. Oh, it's fucking pipe blends. Let me look at Because when I remember I looked at them, they didn't look like the fit and finish was nowhere near what his was. I mean, but like... What the fuck? How how is a layman like me gonna know that? I mean, well, I mean, going by that, then I mean, a Savinelli and a and a Dunhill or Sir Joppico or Arger pipe should be all be the same too. That's not true because Dunhill's got a different brand name associated. You're talking about two different brands. Yeah, no, but talking layman, about quality. Yeah, I mean, a layman's a layman. Doesn't matter what brand it is at that point, then. Yeah, but everybody, come, what the fuck are we arguing about? Like, <laughs> everyone knows a fucking Ford is not as good as a fucking Lambo. That's just, everybody knows that. It's kind of like I can look at a brain and say, well, not, and I Ford love Salvinelli's, don't get me Aston wrong. Martin, but Ford owns Aston Martin, so. What's that have to do with anything? It's no, wait, the same I, company, but a completely different vehicle, completely different price. And could, yeah, but it's the same damn off. pipe. Why is he selling a fucking cheaper version of the pipe on Cigars International? That's bullshit. I'm just doubting it's the exact... I'm with Bullshark here. I'm doubting it's the exact same pipe. You cut something to make it cheaper. But why is it advertised the same pipe? And it looks the same. I'm looking right now at the triple distilled Devil Anus, and they're 150 On his site, they're 150 They were not earlier. Oh, shooter, the conversations you cause. Whatever, man. Jonathan, if you want to come on the show and defend yourself, do it. Defend Otherwise, yourself. Yeah. Why well, sold out to the band? Let's see. All right, let's see. They're the same fucking price. The same they were thing. not. I'm sorry. I'm I grab a screenshot. What? what? I'm looking at them. Yeah, man, it was a different price, dog. Man, you've been sipping on your own damn moonshine. <laughs> that gin and juice, dog. I'm What's this blue-collar series here? 
No, that one I don't know. That's a new one. I haven't noticed that one. Before. But it has the devil ants in it. Ants. <clears throat> they are some pretty good looking pipes. They See, are. I That's thought awesome. I thought you were talking about the mason jar pipes compared to his, you know, triple distilled or bootlegger pipes. That's what I thought you were referring to. Not a triple distilled versus triple distilled. Why are they all sold out on his website and you can only get them on pipes and cigars? There's like nothing on the site you can actually order. Well, that, and that's the other thing. He's going to make more money selling direct. It's business 101. Sometimes, people, man. No, you can't buy shit off his fucking website. I just got a couple of them that are available. None of the ones I want. Yeah, none of the ones I want either. The Patriots, then the uh, mediums, what I, or the darks, what I want. Oh, there it is. The deviled egg. Yep. Woo! You see the, the one under custom pipes, the deviled egg number two? No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, go under custom. Look is that, that available? No, it's not, but just look at it. <laughs> no, because there are only one. It's only one of those. Yeah. And what he'll, he'll do is he'll actually he'll make the pipe, and then he'll go to some of the Facebook uh, group, pipe groups and say, or on his own private, you know, Facebook profile, he'll say, "I just made this and I'm putting it on the site right now." And literally, if you wait five minutes, too late. It's gone. That is kind of a sexy pipe, though. It is. Look at that mouthpiece. I think is pretty sweet. What are we looking at? Uh, the Moonshine Original Devil Egg Number Two under Custom Pipes First Page. Yeah. I love the Cumberland bits. That's what that gets me every oh, time. Oh yeah. I know, I saw a couple of those, those Cumberland bits. I was like, Ooh. Ooh, that Moonshine Brass Cat Poker is pretty sweet, too. Yeah, I was just looking at that one, too. The Devil Aid Dark the Smooth with the nice White too. Juma. Woo! Not that June Bug pipe, but the green mouthpiece with the red band. Yeah. What is the deal with all the Ric Flair here? What, what are we doing here? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Isn't Ric Flair dead? I don't know, is he? I think, think Ric Flair died recently. So don't make me cry. No, I'm being serious. I really think that's the truth. Let me just Google. Call me on my bullshit. Yeah, Cleveland. No, apparently he's still alive from what I'm seeing. I, about say, I didn't think I'd ever heard, him, heard from him. He's, God, he's 66, but he's still around. I thought he was dead. Now a lot of those wrestlers are dead, but uh, not him. He doesn't look like the same Ric Flair anymore, I'll tell you that. No. <laughs> but he's still around. All Damn, right. these blue collar ones are pretty tight, too. Yeah. They're all pretty nice. It looks like these blue collar ones, what they are, it's basically he's buying blocks kind of preformed a little bit. And that he's finishing them. That's why they're cheaper. They're ten dollars cheaper. Yeah. Which I mean, is it worth? <clears throat> Man, I'm telling you, I'm about to start a riot. None of them are even in fucking stock, man. No, that's the part that I don't like. But apparently, you know, I'm thinking he just makes one, and he throws it up there. When it's sold, it's sold out. Yeah, you'll you'll notice like on the the, the triple distilled and like the bootlegger, mm -hmm. he'll he'll make a batch and then puts them up and they sell out. And then he'll make a batch and puts it up and they sell out. So, I mean, they're real popular on the uh, you know the pipe forums. I know that, real popular. And I just I mean to me anytime it's like a you know a small American company or you know. I don't know. Like to me, I like I like you know getting these American-made pipes because I mean, so much you hear about you know all the high-quality English and Danish and Italian pipes. You know, it's like you, I like I like buying some of these you know pipes from American. Yeah, American guys. You know, you know, kind of like you know, kind of like you know the Dagner pipes or Moonshine or like you know. Mark Tinsky or Tim West or something like that. I mean, it's, you know, American. I need to buy myself American. a boutique pipe. I've never I, actually owned one. I freaking love, love, love this dagger. Love it. 
and it was $99. And you bet you ain't one. Let's go. I need another one. All right. Well, we're I think we're worn out or welcome. Yeah, we're, we're well over on this one. I know. And I got shit. To, I ain't got a job. I ain't got shit to do. But it ain't Friday. But it ain't Friday. Nope. All right. Well, that, Pop Dummies, episode 20-something, Dan Tobacco, Old Ironsides, Moonbeam, Bull Shark. We're fucking out until next week. And we have no idea what we're doing, so it's going to be a total fucking shit show. Until then, keep it smoky, bitches. Uh. Waiter. <laughs>